Now, a wee bit of positivity, Scotty, before we start. It was Captain Tav's 300th appearance for Rangers today. Where does he rank for you and Rangers captains you... and overall player? I thought I thought you were going to ask, where does today's performance rank? Nope. nope. <laughs> 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 it is 300 i'd say it's probably one of the worst uh no in all seriousness um i absolutely love to have everyone's entitled to an off day that's coming later in the pod um <laughs> i think he's a, a tremendous captain and he's grown into the role i think he was thrust into the role to begin with uh but when you're offered the rangers captaincy you just don't turn it down mm-hmm. uh, and f- obviously Gerard sees a lot of leadership qualities in him that we particularly didn't see at the start. Uh, but he's grown into the role. And when he lifted 55, I was absolutely delighted for him. And I don't think you'll find a single Rangers fan that would begrudge him of that title, that medal. Uh, and I hope he wins many, many more. John, in terms of Rangers right backs, um, we've done a few greatest 11s um, over on Patreon and I think right back's always the position that we've struggled to kind of nail down one specific player, you know, for your left back, I mean the greatest left back of all time obviously David Robertson um, stuff like that, you've got the goalkeeper where does Tav rank in Rangers right back history? He's my best because in my lifetime he's 100% the best that I've, that I've seen um, consistently because like you said it seemed to be the one that always moved um, mm-hmm. Fucking Rickson, Muscat, Morris Ross, like like I've I've went through that kind of lineage. Rickson, best years were as a centre mid, so he's mm-hmm. already almost out the right back argument. Um, if Stephen Wright been injured, Alec Clarence was really good in nine in a row, but he always seemed like just an average player that was just there. Um, but Tavernier's the one. Tavernier's the best one I've seen. He's improved, but today, <laughs> today had elements <laughs> of um, Tavernier first SPL season under Warburton. Um, it felt like a little bit like they'd maybe forgotten how to defend in that game. But that being said, I would have said he was he was in a competition with um, ten other players for worst player in the park there. Hmm. Right. Okay. Well, shall we? Shall we talk about the game? <laughs> shall we do it? I tell you what. I was going to, and I normally do. I like to start with starting lineups and should they have played him? What about this? What about that? The only thing I'm going to pick out of the starting lineup, and it's not going to be left backs or centre mids, Scotty. It's going to be the goalkeeping position, and that's got nothing to do with either giving away a penalty or saving a penalty. But were you surprised that it was McLaughlin instead of McGregor? Not really. No. Um... No, I, I think McGregor, I don't know, he's, he just seems a bit frantic at the moment. And I think that's breeding into the back line. <laughs> that said, <laughs> <laughs> having watched that, I, it's, I had no bearing on the back line whatsoever. But um, I think there's longevity in McLaughlin as well. Um, I think it's a really difficult one and it's really it's at the moment my head's quite foggy and it's really hard to to pick the bones out of that one it's it's a really good point you made because instantly i didn't even pick up on it when the team teams were announced i just said oh mclaughlin right right didn't even tweak that mcgregor was on the bench mm-hmm. just I, I i was a little bit annoyed uh <clears throat> by his performance against motherwell and obviously naturally changed for the cup um I think McLaughlin actually every time every time McLaughlin plays, he's been solid. I don't think he's as good as McGregor potentially last season, but I don't think McGregor's as good as McGregor last season. Mm-hmm. So, if we're gonna, we can't really start comparing goalkeepers because none of them have actually turned up, or potentially McLaughlin has. So, yeah, it's a difficult one. What do we do? Um, I, do you know what I think as well? I, I was I watched the the Motherwell game back during the week. Obviously, I wasn't on the match reaction because I, I literally texted you, Martin, saying I can't go on and do this reaction after how I feel in this game. I was too hungover going to the game. I was too level with the performance. If I came on here, I'd have probably get the podcast shut down with some of my some of my opinions. Do you know who got off scot free in that Motherwell equaliser? The person who's not been in goal since. Mm. A ball gets played back to him, and it's a simple clearance up the park. He takes a shitty touch out wide. And mm-hmm. then plays the ball out for a throw-in that Mother will take quick. That goal 
came directly from a McGregor mistake, and he got away with it because Simpson and Barisic after that were an absolute riot. But it starts mm-hmm. from McGregor not just launching that up the park first time. None of that happens after that. And I think he's looked at McLaughlin and went, OK, he's nowhere near McGregor shot stopping. But guess what? Nobody is. He, mm-hmm. He's been the best keeper we've had for two decades. Um, been the best keeper in Scotland for two decades. He, he is just the, the best goalie of that generation that came through. So nobody's going to be as good as McGregor at shot stopping. But McGregor's weakness is with the ball quick at his feet. Goal kicks and punts are fine. But the ball quick at his feet, taking a quick touch and clearing, he does have a problem that McLaughlin mm-hmm. doesn't. And I think that's all he's looked at and went, why not give him a run? That was McLaughlin's seven, uh, 16th clean sheet and 20 starts for Rangers. Nah, that's no, ridiculous. Nah, no. That's yeah. ridiculous. That's mental. I know he's mm-hmm. came in and played lesser, in quotes, games. 16 clean sheets and 20 is ridiculous. I and he very, very close to not having the clean sheet again today. Yep. Um, oh, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> <I'm in> trouble. <laughs> Scotty, I need you to take it for two seconds. Something's just happened. On you go, Scotty. I wasn't expecting that. What do you want to talk about? Can we not? No. Well, what I was noticing, um, <laughs> I just, I, I just seen come somebody call it out as well. So that was his 16 clean sheet for Rangers, in 430 games. That was John McLaughlin's 150th club clean sheet today. Really? I, I, I know he's played in the lower leagues in England and he's played uh, in for Hearts in Scotland, but that is an incredible record. For the type just, of leagues that he's played in, that's one in that's better than one in three clean sheets. That's remarkable. Um, the penalty saves not amazing, but he saves a penalty. The keeper ever saves a penalty. It really doesn't matter how good it is. Um, his save from Griffiths is really underrated in the first half. The right foot volley in the bottom corner. Um, I thought that was he done really well to hit, hold that as well because McMullen was following that in. Um, yeah, I, I just I thought McLaughlin, McLaughlin and Lundstrom. I don't think Lundstrom is amazing as Twitter would make you believe, but I think McLaughlin and Lundstrom were the two that I would I would give big pass marks to in that game, more for their out of possession work rather than anything else. Um, I thought McLaughlin was man of the match for me. I don't I wouldn't have given it to Lundstrom. We win a game by a single goal and there's a there's a penalty saved. Goalie's man of the match for me. Even if that goalie gives away the penalty. Oh, he didn't give away the penalty. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm always joking. No, listen, oh, kids. I'm so. about to launch this ball through the screen. 